Hi, welcome to this video lesson, How to Set Up an EQ Template in GarageBand, which is being recorded as Assignment 5 of the Coursera course, Introduction to Music Production. My name is Kendall Giles, and I'm speaking to you right now from the middle of Virginia, on the east coast of the United States. You can also find me online at my website, kendallgiles.com. EQ is used to alter the frequency response of a recording and plays a fundamental role in shaping and mixing recording tracks. It can be used for corrective as well as creative purposes. For example, we might want to remove low frequency rumble or noise to clean up a track. Or we might want to call the listener's attention to different instruments at different parts in a song. In this lesson, we'll see how to build an EQ template in GarageBand to help us get the most out of EQ. To see the most important ways EQ is used, consider an analog mixing board. In hardware, only the most important recording and mixing features are given space on the mixing board, and we see the most important EQ features on each channel strip. These suggest EQ features we should have in our software GarageBand EQ template. First, we have a high pass filter, which is used to remove sonic energy below an instrument's fundamental frequency such as from low-end noise and rumbles. Next, we have a high shelving filter, which is used to control the brightness and helps guide the listener to a particular instrument in the mix. Then, we have two mid-range parametric filters. These, among other things, can be used to remove unwanted resonances. Finally, we have a low shelving filter, which can be used to emphasize the bass and give warmth to a track. Here in GarageBand, I've got the plug-in window for a particular track. In GarageBand, there's a limit to the number of effects you can have per track. So our strategy is going to try to minimize the number of slots that we used for our EQ template. Also, note that for each plug-in that we use, you have the option of saving all of your settings as a preset. And this will be important for making our template reusable. First, we're going to set up an AU High Pass Filter Effect plugin. This filter has a downward slope of about 12 dB per octave, and I'm going to set the filter cutoff frequency at around 75 to 100 Hz. Note that I've saved my preferred setting as a preset with a memorable label. For the remaining EQ filters, remember that since GarageBand has a limit to the number of effects plugins you can use, I like to use the Visual EQ plugin. With this plugin, I can adjust the EQ settings for four different bands and therefore have a low end shelving filter, two mid range EQs, and a high shelving filter while only using one plugin slot. Once again, once you set each of these filters to your preferred settings, give a memorable name as a preset. I also want to point out that these settings here, like for example, I'm attenuating in the low mid range and I'm uh, amplifying in the high end and the low end, these are just for this example. As you know, you'll have to adjust the EQ settings for each particular track and each particular instrument. But this particular plugin allows you to adjust those four filters that we saw on the analog mixing board with one effect plugin in GarageBand. Once you've configured these two effects plugins, now for each track, all you have to do is add these effects and recall your labeled presets for the AU high pass filter and the visual EQ, and you're good to go. With this strategy, you've also saved yourself some plugin slots so you can apply other effects if you need to. So that's it for a quick tutorial on how to set up an EQ template in GarageBand. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching and please keep in touch.